Hello beautiful creatures, welcome to my channel. I am Aradia, the Witch of Dark Light, and I hope you all are doing well. Um, it's been a minute, um, it feels like forever since I've sat here and um, spoken to you, spoken to the camera, <laughs> essentially speaking to you. Um, I miss you guys, and um, I want to say thank you um, and share my gratitude for all of the new subscribers that are here, um, I thank you for being here. Uh, you are welcomed. And to all of you that have been here with me for a while on my YouTube journey, um, thank you for being here with me. Um, I appreciate it very much. And thank you to Ivy, the occultist, for... Uh, giving me a shout out as one of the smaller YouTube creators, the, the smaller channels. Um, there was a tag, um, and I'll put it in the description of this video, but the tag was to uh, share, shed some light on 13 YouTube creators um, under a certain amount, or just smaller YouTube creators. Um, and uh, I was luckily one of the ones that she picked. So I appreciate, I appreciate you very much, um, Ivy the Occultist, for um, first of all doing that because I there were some great channels on all of the the channels that you listed were great. So thank you for doing that. Just doing a little housekeeping before I get into um, this video, which is going to be. Uh, Q&A, me answering some questions that um, was given on a post, a community post that I created over on YouTube. I didn't post it on Instagram because I didn't want to be overwhelmed if anyone would have. I'm not sure if anyone would have asked the question over there, but I wanted to, since this is my first time doing something like this, I wanted to take it slow. So um, I got a few questions um, that I'll be answering. And when I looked at the questions, um, it can be difficult for a creator to answer these because they can be a bit personal, but I asked for it. So I'm going to give you the answers. But um, a little bit of housekeeping. First, I want to talk about wine and witchcraft. Um, at the time that I'm doing this video, um, it's a few days away. Um, at the time you'll that I'll be posting this, um, they are working on doing their anniversary videos. Um, the second one, they're doing three for this uh, anniversary. And um, I will be one of their guests returning on set as one of their guests so I just wanted to give put that out there that if you are available and um, inclined to do so please do go over and check out Wine and Witchcraft this Sunday on the 16th um, at 9 o'clock um, it is uh, enter at your own risk <laughs> because who knows what could happen over there. So now let's get into this Q&A. First, I want to say these questions or these answers are based on um, how I practice today, based on the current in which I flow in today. Um, my goal is to evolve and a lot of my purpose is to do things um, to be illuminated and learn and grow. So with that comes change. So the way I feel about something today may not necessarily be the same um, feeling over time. First question, how did or do you cope with outside pressure first before i answer that i don't think i think that's something that is a daily work um you know our emotions uh are they flow they're fluid right so one day we may be vibrating in a, a higher frequency and we could take on the world <laughs> And then another day, we just might be vibrating in lower frequencies and may not be able to necessarily handle certain things out in the mundane. So with that said, typically what I've learned, because, you know, like I said, that's a difficult thing to do when 
your life, your personal life is predominantly, you know, you're, you're, you're living as a witch, you're living as this spiritual person in, you know, your life outside the mundane or your job is your craft. Um, you know, all things that are you are surrounded with within your home and even your friends are all a part of your magical world but then you go to work and these are not things that you are surrounded with and even sometimes your family um, they aren't on board um, but I'll get into that with the uh, another question that was asked so with work um, what I found is best and typical me like you know I, I I'm like I don't I have my tattoo here I don't hide it um, but I surround everything I look at I try to find the magic in it I try to find the spirituality in it I try to make all things magical right to create a magical life so when I'm you know when I would go to work or when I would work in the office I would have like crystals on my desk um, I would just look at things and in, in, uh, magically like I would journal the process while I'm at work and find the magic in it and I know it could be difficult but just finding the magic I think that's one of the biggest things that helped me um, when I would go into the office or go work a nine to five is I would surround myself with magical things and you could do it subtly doesn't necessarily have to be this big and bold expression of yourself there are subtle things that you could do like a plant at your desk and you can like put crystals in it or let this plant be a representation of something magical and another thing and not everyone can do this or um, can uh, defeat the fear in doing this find out what environment works for you find out what environment in the workplace is conducive to the way that you are able to acclimate your spiritual life and it doesn't necessarily I don't mean like um, go be a spiritual worker what I mean is there's some jobs that for example uh, a job I used to work at for years um, it started out very mundane but what happened was the more I began to talk about my life with some of my co-workers they were interested and then typical me I infiltrated <laughs> <laughs> the mundane and before you knew it you know we would all get to work early and then I would put on my um, paranormal machine we would walk around the office to see what it said and um, I had them like bring crystals to work and different things like that so <clears throat> finding like-minded people um, is another way so surrounding yourself with things that are magical uh, Put yourself out there and begin to talk about some of the things that you feel is magical for you in your life and you might be surprised at the interest um, in what it is that you do and um, lastly if you are truly unhappy in your surroundings ask yourself why and work on a plan right put a, a plan together of taking the steps to see your way out of that situation and into one that is that can better work with you where you are free to be who you are where you are in a sense there's levels right where you are more free than it than you are in your current situation because sometimes when we have something actively in the works it helps us through situations that we no longer want to be in um, by knowing okay there's a plan and I see the logic I see the steps that I need to take to remove myself from this into a better situation so I hope that helps I hope that answers that question because that is um, some of the ways that I've dealt with working within the mundane and, and, and 
acclimating my life into the mundane, my magical life, my spiritual life. So the next question was, outside of your husband and your daughter, um, not to go into detail, but the person that asked this question um, is unaware. My daughter passed away. Um, my granddaughter is currently living with me. Um, so it would be my husband and granddaughter. Um, does your family know you're a witch? And how do they feel about that? Is it awkward? So, hell yes, it's awkward. Um, however, I do not let that hinder me and I do not let that stop me from being who I am. And I know that's a big, bold statement for many. Um, it's difficult because this is your family after all. Um, however, with the life, my life, how I grew up and the things that happened, um, I was always born with the ability to say, this doesn't work for me. I'm leaving or I'm moving or I'm running away. And that was um, a lot of what I did in my childhood. I ran away, I was in group homes and different things like that. And even if I found out the group home was horrible, I ran away from that. And um, I didn't at, it, at all costs, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't in a situation that wasn't, uh, that was, un I wasn't in a situation that was uncomfortable to me. But um, I could go on a whole tangent about that. But my um, family, I haven't come out and you know verbally said this is what I do this is who I am however I have a YouTube channel I have a website <laughs> I dress the way that I do I don't hide like in the way that I dress speaks volumes um, the things that I do speaks volumes so um, it's out there. I'm not hiding it. It's just that we never, when I say we, I mean my mother, and she is a pastor of a church. She's a Baptist pastor of a church. So this is not a conversation I can see me and her having with it being, um, with it, you know, not ending well. So no, I haven't verbally spoke it. But I live my life nonetheless, and um, we don't have a relationship where she comes over to my house, really. So it's not like I'm scrambling to hide things in my home. She's been here before, and you know I have pictures of moons and you know things that the tarot card pictures. So it's not anything like I said that I hide. Um, she's probably praying for me <laughs> which i hope she, i would uh, i really hope she doesn't do that because you know that's praying against my will but um yes it is still awkward and um i don't hide anything i'm not in the broom closet if you will so um that's that question <laughs> what is your particular tradition of witchcraft so I'm not a traditional witch. I don't have um, any traditions that I um, follow. Ha however, I would like to say that um, in me growing up, there are some cultural influences that have played a big role in what it is that I do. So my mother, although she's never claimed the title of witch, I learned a lot from her by way of roots and herbs and this played a big part in what I wanted to learn in growing up and how I work with uh, plants and herbs and medicinally and spiritually. So I was influenced by a lot of the traditions that came from the South and how my mother was brought up. and and um, Arkansas where I was born so a lot of that um, has influenced who I am but I don't claim anything I don't claim this tra tradition I'm not 
I'm very much eclectic um, in what it is that I do. Um, I am, if I, if it resonates with me, I'm going to try it and see um, how it works within what I do um, spiritually. So the next one is, if you work with deities, who is your favorite to work with? That, I, that's a tough question. I don't think I can answer that, um, truly answer that, because um, each deity and spirit and you know entity, they all have something different. So I will, however, say that Hakate has played a significant role in my life and she, for me at least, I don't know if she'll hang around, but for me, um, she will always be a presence that I will go to. Um, it's like your family, right? Uh, you may move on, but they're still your family. So this is the idea, for me at least, around um, working with Hakate. And I like to have a balance of things so I would answer that question also with saying Lucifer um, also played a pivotal role in my life in transitioning to being okay with both sides of the things like the dark going into um, the shadows and being comfortable with it and knowing that it's okay knowing that it's a part of who I am um, so those would be who I would say um, favorite. <laughs> I don't want to say favorite, but if we have to um, use that word, those are the two that I would definitely say um, played a big part in my life because they were there at uh, pivotal moments and pivotal changes in my life. Next question. Do you have a particular favorite form of magic that you practice regularly? Big question. Um, I've tried quite a bit um, because I was, you know, trying to see where I fit in, what I resonated with, or just, you know, even now I dabble in certain things to see what it's about, understand what it is, take what resonates with me and and just work through it, see how it, it helps me in whatever stage of my path that I'm on. So initially when I came in, I was, um, uh, I tried Wicca. I was in a coven, a Wiccan coven. Um, so then I came out of that and wanted to delve into other things. Uh, you know, I went to the left-hand path side of things, which that's still totally me today. But, um, you know, I went through working with The Primal Craft by Mark Allen Smith. Um, and still today I have those, those grimoires, which are... Um, wonderful grimoires and I'm even thinking about now um, and I have been for the last couple of months delving back into that a little deeper but I work with that on the darker aspect of things and which is actually how I was introduced to Hecate and Lucifer and Billy Al um, and I, even throughout all of this because of my heritage I even tried uh, hoodoo um, and one would say you know I'm not a, a chaos magician but I do resonate with the evolution of it right going taking different paths to to um, see what works for you works for you at that point in your life and see how that can help you grow see how that can help tap into another part of yourself um, and then move on to the next thing so I'm kind of doing that without actively saying this is what I'm doing um, because I learn I love to learn right I don't want to stick to one thing and if a if something tells me 
you know, gives me that dogmatic feeling like, if you're doing this, this is all you have to do, then I'm like, okay, we're moving on to the next thing, or this is not how I'm approaching it. But that's a tangent I could go on to, um, but I don't have a particular uh, magic, right? Because that was a question <laughs> with me rambling. I don't have a favorite, um, is what I'm trying to say. I don't have a favorite form of magic um, all things that I do currently is through the lens of the left hand path um, because I love the discovery of what's in the dark right I love the discovery of um, tapping into those deeper mysteries that uh, a lot of the right hand path may not necessarily go on and um you know the jury's out with that also because there are some people on the right hand path that are very deep and, and, and mystical so um but for the most part i'm i don't want to ramble <laughs> for the most part i am what i do comes through the lens of the left hand path um, side of things i'm more eclectic in nature so what are your go-to tips for witching on the go now, I really don't have an answer for that because I do and I don't, but when you're on the go, it, 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 that depends on where you're going, um, who you are around, you know, what it, like if you're going to an event. Um, so what I would say to that is what I typically do is I always carry something that is in the form of uh, something that I can use to cleanse. So I'll carry my Palo Santo with me in a lighter, um, carry some resin, uh, something that I could use to cleanse a space with. Because outside of that, um, I am the tool, right? We are the tools. So if anything needs to be done, I, I'm, I'm the tool. Like I can, I cast that circle. I perform a ritual. I manifest through the words that I speak. Um, you know, I am, I am the thing. So I am the tool that I carry on the go. Um, outside of carrying something with me to cleanse, it is all me. So I don't really have um, an answer to anything um like you have a witch kit that you carry with you <laughs> i don't do anything like that if that's the type of that was the question that you were asking but um on the go it's all me and a little some cleansing um items the next question is favorite incense very easy frankincense frankincense resin is my most favorite and i'm always burning that resin next question is favorite season i'm a typical witch my favorite season is fall you know halloween and 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 all of that i do like spring um but my if we had to go in order by seasons that i love it would first one would be fall and the last question is if you could pick one magical tool or component what would it be and why that is very easy also and um this is i guess more of a recent development over the last couple of years because i you know i had some favorite tools but this is the one that i love and um i probably should carry that with me but it's the cauldron now the reason why I have developed a love for the cauldron is because of what it represents, right? This is the womb. You have this this dark cast iron, right? And and it represents the feminine um, parts, right? The the womb. So when you conduct magic in it, and specifically when you're using this cauldron over time it builds this energy right this this vortex i like to call it within the, the cauldron and it it's like when you place your candle in there when you place you burn something in there intentionally 
and it's like you're sending it into this vortex this this magic realm where you're constantly casting this magic so it's like you have created like a if that's even a thing a egregore or a topa or like you've created this this place where your magic goes and it's manifested so um the cauldron is absolutely my most favorite tool of the craft I also i wanted to share with uh, my patrons i am uh working through the quilpeth so we're just pretty much starting now where um i believe on monday the 17th which is the new moon i'm going to be holding a live where we work with uh, Lilith or Nama. Not, I haven't quite put it together yet, but within the first spear. So um, I'm going to be sharing um, the use of blood on the sigils that we create. Uh, we're also going to be having either a black mirror um, or any Thing that you use to scry with and a couple other things um, uh, we're gonna have a red candle but that's just a little bit um, I'm gonna have um, something formal written on public publicly so you can see it if you go into the patreon but um, if you would like to join that the tier is at um, five dollars and that is the tier that you can join to um, be a part of this journey um, or you can just um, join for that month just to see what it's about uh, or try the other tiers that will also have access um, the tiers after that have access to this tier as well but we will be doing a live um, working um, on the Quilpeth um, long journey but we are starting at the beginning so if you um, I'm putting it out there just you can go over and check that out um, so that's what I wanted to share with you guys today um, so my next video I'm going to do is going to be about um, warding uh, different methods of protection uh, warnings um, uh, for your home generally for your home and for yourself so stay tuned for that it'll probably be friday that it, it comes out but um go over and check out the patreon if you are interested in working with the quilpeth the tree of death the opposite to the tree of life um and how we are taking this approach is um for shadow work so I hope um, all of you guys have a beautiful day, night, evening, afternoon, morning, <laughs> whenever it is that you're watching this. Um, until the next video, I love you all and into the shadows.